Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's episode of Nadi Conversations. Greetings from Asian Confluence. We extend a very warm welcome to our distinguished guest for today's conversation webinar entitled Ethnobotanical Practices and Conservation of Endangered Plants in Northeast, a discussion. Asian Confluence is a think tank institution headquartered in Shillong, Meghalaya in Northeast that works through research, training, advocacy and exchange programs towards creating a better understanding of the Eastern South Asian region in the larger framework of the Indo-Pacific region as a confluence of ideas and geographies. Our vision is for a stable and prosperous Asia where ecology is honored, diversity is celebrated, prosperity is shared, sovereignty is respected, and boundaries become connectors. Nadi Conversations is our ongoing initiative, which includes a series of webinars and lectures on the common theme to highlight the narrative of a celebration of the common riverine and civilization heritage of the nations and people in the Ganga Brahmaputra Meghna Basin. Ethnobotany is the scientific study of the traditional knowledge and customs of people concerning plants and their medicinal, re religious and other uses. The northeastern region of India is home to almost 50% of the flowering plants and exhibits a phenomenal diversity. The region is also the home to many wild variants of current day cultivated plants like those belonging to the banana, orchid, citrus, and ginger families, to name a few. This region is also a home to more than 250 tribes of different ethnic groups, speaking over 200 dialects while following distinct cultural and ethnic practices. The study of ethnobotanical practices in the region may show us the way for the promotion and best utilization of the traditional herbal medicinal plants and wild races of crops with high resistance to insects and other damaging diseases for the benefit of mankind. Our distinguished guests for this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, are Dr. Vincent T. Darlong from the Martin Luther Christian University, Shillong, Dr. A. A. Mao from the Botanical Survey of India, and Dr. Pot Sangbam Kumar Singh from Manipur, Manipur University. Dr. Vincent Darlong has over 30 years of professional experiences, both with the Government of India, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, and the International Fund for Agricultural Development, a specialized UN agency. His academic background is on the natural resources management but professionally he has worked on the development of tribal and rural people building on the social biocultural practices. Currently, he is the Vice Chancellor of Martin Luther Christian University, Shillong, and he is an alumni of the Northeastern Hill University. Dr. A. A. Mao is the Director of the Botanical Survey of India, which is headquartered in Kolkata, West Bengal. He has over 30 years of research experience in micropropagation of orchids, rhododendrons, medicinal plants, ethnobotany, and floristic study, especially of Northeast India. He is also currently serving as the president of the Society of India, Indian Ethnobotanist, and the president of Association of Plant Taxonomists. Dr. Potsangman Kumar Singh is the professor of the Center of Advanced Study in Life Sciences, Ethnobotany and Plant Physiology in the Department of Life Sciences, Manipur University. His field of specialization is plant physiology and he has been teaching this for 30 years. He has also had a research experience in the investigation of the different aspects of Zizanifia latifolia, wild rice, a rare species of India. I would like to welcome all our three speakers, sir. And now I would like to hand over the mic to Dr. Vincent Darlong, who will be serving as a moderator this afternoon. Sir. 
thank you to can you hear me yes you can, we can hear you now okay we would also like to thank the asian confluence for bringing us together for this a very very interesting conversation this afternoon nadi of course the acronym is on natural allies in development and interdependencies but at the same time nadi in another language could also mean river a river means water and water touches every one of us as nadi touches every countries today to talk about ethnobotanical diversity of northeast we have to distinguish scholars one to the academic lens dr p k singh professor p k singh from manipur university and the other through the lens of research and development dr a a mao but both of them has a common footprint that their educational research is for the benefit of the people of this region and the nation as a whole through the ethnobotanical practices and conservation of endangered plants of northeast so with this short background it is a pleasure to be part of this conversation especially given the responsibility of moderating these two distinguished scholar who will be telling us about the ethno botanical diversity of this region we know very well that the biocultural landscape of the northeast which is as diverse as the plant biodiversity do use ethno biology or ethno botanical resources in particular not just as medicine or any other practices but also as food crops or many other varieties ways we will be learning more about this as we listen to these two distinguished scholars may i now have the pleasure of inviting dr a mo to to get us through this topic please thank you very much dr vincent and also i would like to thank nadi for inviting me to be a part of this con uh, conversation yes uh, the topic for today is very important especially for the northeastern region we have been discussing about the ethnobotanical practices and the conservation for a long long time already about the northeast a lot of research work on ethnobotany has been published from this region i can tell you in 2015 16 i was asked to review work on ethnobotany of northeast so i did a review article and in that for the uh, from 2000 to 2015 there were about 2000 2000 articles research articles published from northeastern alone and it was very interesting to see that assam was the highest and second comes like meghalaya then the, this uh, manipur like that those are articles so many research articles on ethnobotany of these different tribes from the region has been published as i said in the uh, almost in 15 years span about 2000 articles were there research articles from university research institute and different uh, 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 i mean different institution that shows the i mean the large data availability in from the region but then uh, you see all this has been uh, reported but whether we are making use of this information already uh, documented in that point of view i must say we have done very less we have documented on ethnobotany especially medicinal plant so much but the output or the benefit for the local people who has done the work or who who are medical uh, this medicinal ethnobotanical practitioners 
they have not got any benefit from this uh, studies as such. So that way, it is uh, in a way very difficult to tell the local people to conserve this medicinal plant or rare endangered when we talk about it. From my experience, as I'm working in Botanical Survey of India, one of our mandate is also to conserve ex to this rare threatened or endangered plants. We have our botanical gardens in Shillong, also Gantok, Arunachal, then also in different parts of the country. So our one of our mandate is to bring the uh, rare endangered plants and cultivate in this ex situ in the garden. But so from this aspect, in the Northeast, when we talk about conservation of this, our uh, this ethnobotanical practices or the important plants which you have, it is very difficult for the villagers to do it. Until unless the government gives support, financial support for them to conserve. Otherwise, you see, everyone is struggling hand to mouth. And to conserve, it is uh, impossible for, uh, to expect from them that they will be conserving these rare endangered plants if they are not getting any benefit. If they get benefit from government, they may do. Otherwise, I don't think they will conserve. Whenever we visit the gar uh, this field, and whenever we visit the villages, we tell them to conserve these plants. These are very important. And they also tell us, the, the uses of this but different plants for medicine or for other or other uses but if we tell them you conserve preserve it don't destroy or, don't, or you try to protect it but the first thing is that if they are not getting any economic uh, benefit they say they, they cannot because they need first food and money so for that they need to cultivate, they need to do farming. So in that process, most of these, uh, these plants are also, uh, I mean, uh, destroyed or done away. It, uh, uh, that is why until, unless government has a concrete plan for conservation and with a financial incentive for the villages or for the local people, it is uh, next impossible to tell them to uh, conserve. And from this medicinal plant, uh, this we all used to say, Northeast is the richest in biodiversity. We harbor more than 50% of the uh, plant resources or biodiversity of the country. But then when it comes to benefit sharing, if we look at from the Northeast, I don't think we are getting anything for in this aspect of them. You may think that I'm very negative, but it is a reality is that you see, where is a, any uh, medicinal plant uh, grower, uh, grower? In the Northeast, we have talked about this uh, medicinal plants a lot. But reality, whatever we have is just in the wild. And if we start collecting from the wild, within one year, two years, it will, will finish all what we have. What we say, we are very rich in or this uh, medicinal plant resources in the uh, in the region but reality it we don't have much we have number of species is there but the population if we're to talk about the pop or the abundance since the, our area the geographical or the uh, the size or land holding is very small though we may have a lot of species until unless we have mass cultivation or mass uh, propagation, there's no chance for this commercialization or for economic benefit for the people. And to do that, of course, we need a lot of planning. We need a lot of uh, this uh, training to be given to the local or uh, local people, at least in that uh, cultivation packages, then also this uh, harvesting, post-harvesting technology, the value addition and all this thing has to go in. Otherwise, just telling them, do the medicinal plant cultivation and you'll get a lot of money. It's not going to be like that. It is not that easy. Nobody is going to buy the medicinal plant. We must know that 
medicinal plants are not cult uh, are cultivated for specific purpose if there is no market there is no point of cultivating because they are not vegetable you cannot use as a table or in table or as a vegetable so uh, uh, if anybody wanted to cultivate any medicine medicinal plant they have to look first into the market and if there's a market potential and if there's people who are willing to buy only we can re uh, recommend or we can suggest the villages to go for it otherwise it will be just a waste of their time and they will not get any benefit and also for that if we really wanted that they, uh, to utilize the rich resources of our region the northeast what is required is a lot of research need to be uh, uh, undertaken in that and then uh, for that we need uh like uh, as i said we say we are, uh, there are a lot of uh, plants which are having, uh, which are used by or eat, eaten by the local ethnic local people, and that if we want to popularize, we need to add value addition to that as food supplement to sell as a food supplement or any cosmetic product. A lot of research has to go in that. So research and development is one of the most important thing. Otherwise, nobody is going to buy by just simply telling this is good for this or good for that. Nobody will buy and eat. So, until unless we develop that research and research uh, aspect, it is going to be a very uh, ch uh, big challenge for Northeast to get any benefit from this uh, our resources. If you look at this Japan, Korea, and China, their products are so nicely packed. The value addition is so nicely done, but from the northeast, if you look at our local product or local uh, ethnic uh, medicine or any other food supplement, uh, food, we have not seen that, we have not developed that uh, aspect. So we need to do that. Then only we will be able to sell our resort or whatever we have, and then we can also get the benefit from it. And at the same time. Once people start getting economic benefit, automatically conservation will come up. But when there's no economic benefit, nobody is going to spend or waste their time in conservation. This is the biggest problem. We, the this, uh, educated people or the so-called uh, researchers or scientists or intellectuals will say, these are important, conserve, do this, do that. That is uh, very easy to say. But in practical, when it comes to reality, people think first for their benefit or for food first than those who are going for those conservation like that. So that is why, as I said, we need to do a lot of planning for this uh, in order to uh, get benefit from these uh, resources. And also the biggest problem with the North is, is that we are talking about this uh, medicinal plant, but we need to know the critical volumes, how much we can produce. We don't have, uh, we are, uh, see when it says the critical volume is 200 tons to 500 tons. So it has to be consistent in their supply for particular medicinal plant also, if you were to, or any any fruit pro uh, food product also. Then also this, uh, again, the quality has to be controlled. Here, if we don't have, if there is no quality control, nobody is going to buy again. All your products will be, uh, I mean, it will be wasted. And in this quality control, there's a lot of, uh, like the essential or the chemical compound content, or the uh, the size of the plant. All those kind of things has to be into look into. And then another thing is that competition. The market of this, uh, especially medicinal plant, the market is very competitive. We have to compete with the outside, uh, outside uh, northeast. And for this, what is happening is, if we look at the Lakadum Tamarik, uh, this haldi, what happened is that from the northeast, they asked for 150 rupees a kg. 
but that is uh, uh, companies will say that is too costly because they are getting from Indonesia and Malaysia 80 rupees per per kg, and also the quality is as good as like uh, this turmeric. So that is why we need uh, that for the competition. We have to look into that. And then again, the, another biggest problem with the North is that the land holding. Our per capita land is very small. We are having very small land holding and to cultivate in a large scale also is very difficult until unless we have that self-help group or cooperative type of thing which can come like that. And then also, before going for all this cultivation or doing, we have to look for potential buyers or the, how much volume we can get and how much is the demand all those things has to be studied carefully. Then only it can be uh, possible and it can be done. Otherwise, today what is happening is that we look, we all look at the subsidy given by the government. We depend on the subsidy. And so somebody wants to get subsidy, so they do, but that is not going to be uh, going to help anyway. So that, uh, that therefore, our strategy should be whatever crop we want to do, which whether it's a long term or short term, it, it, planning has to be planned for long term and short term because some plants require long term, some plants require only one year, two year uh, gestation. So those kind of things has to be listed out and planned out accordingly. And then MOU has to be signed with a self-help group, cooperative society, farmers association, then also like uh, startup entrepreneurs or then NGOs, all these things has to be looked into. Otherwise, what is happening is that there's a very uh, good example from Okrul in Manipur Okrul district. They cultivated 50 acres of turmeric, that, uh, uh, this haldi. And what happened is that even after four years, there were no buyers. They could, nobody is, is willing to buy. They, were not, they are not able to sell. So that is the thing which we need to into that. And then also crops, as I say, like conventional crop or non-conventional crop has to be looked into. Like when I say conventional crop means turmeric, citra, cinnamon, kiwi, passion fruit, etc. Those are the conventional crops. And non-conventional crops are available from the jungle like uh, Lichia cubiva, what is Paris polyphyla, Xantho asylum, and then handicap, all these wild crops which you get from the jungle. These are the type of things we need to plan out. And we also need to look into our approach should be not monoculture, because we don't want to encourage the monoculture in our area also. And also our villages, they grow up, that is a, a intercropping type of crop. So that there should be annual, biannual, and tree, shrub, all the things. These are the type of things we should look into. That otherwise, to me, we are just talking, talking, and nothing is coming out. That's so why we need to look into seriously the uh, issue. Otherwise, all the bioresources or the rich biodiversity of the Northeast will be just remain as a potential. And nothing our people are getting. We are talking about the potential from the for the last so many years, and still it is remaining as a potential. And it is vanishing before we get the benefit. So that is what I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mao. As usual, it was very, very enlightening to listen to you. You have rightly illustrated the various aspect of ethnobotany of Northeast. You know, the communities are the custodian of majority of these plants, as we say, based on the land holding or forest holding statistics of the reason. On the other hand, you have mentioned the various challenges, particularly people's expectation out of the 
ethnobotany, botanical resources that, that they have, they would like to convert these resources into economic assets in terms of finance, and yet this is not really happening. Yet. You have mentioned about the need for incentivization of cultivation of these species. Well, you have also indicated about the challenges of research and development needs, value additions, repackaging of the product, and also not having been able to produce to become commercial volume or critical volume for viable commercial you know, entities. You also indicated about the competition in the market that we have to really look at and the challenges of land holding within the region, limited market intelligence because of which we are not able to sell many of our product and our over reliance on subsidy is another challenge that we have. You have indicated not just about R&D, but at the same time, complete value chain understanding of medicinal plants that we have in this region. You indicated about the potential as a kind of discourse that had been going on over so many decades or years now, converting that potential into actual, translating that into economic benefits remain a challenge for the people of this region. And this is where perhaps we need the support of the government as much as the support of the educational institution and R&D institution. Thank you so much for your you know, as usual, enlightening uh, deliberations and discourse. And of course, perhaps biopiracy is another area in which we need to really look at it in the context of the resources that we have in the Northeast. Thank you so much once again. And I'm sure, I don't know whether we will have the time or whether it is part of the you know, conversation that if somebody would like to ask any question that we might be having later on. Thank you once again. Well, our next speaker is Professor P.K. Singh. You know, I have known him quite some time. Professor Singh, are you there? He has a very, very charismatic name, you know, in the sense of Sang Bam, as charismatic as the ethnobotanical species of Northeast, you know. This is something which is always unique. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation. It's very many years that we have met, but I could see that you have become healthier than before. And I could also see the wisdom that has gone into your years of you know, research in these areas. We are all waiting to listen to you on this topic. So the floor is yours, Professor Singh. Hello. 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 Yes, we can hear you. Uh, I'm very sorry. I am in a car. So I'll reach after 10 minutes. Can uh, you, uh, Dr. Dr. Darlong, can you wait me for 10 minutes? Because, um, <laughs> can you hear yes. me? We can hear you, but I think uh, you can continue. I will reach my office within 10 minutes. I am in the car, so it is okay. inconvenient oh, oh. for me. Okay, sir. No, you have after no issues. Uh, till then, I have some question for for Dr. Mao from his okay. uh, address. Please. Yeah. So, Dr. Dr. Singh will wait for you about 10 minutes. We will reconnect you after about 10 minutes. Please go ahead with the question to Dr. Mao. Yeah, Dr. Mao, you made this point that it's almost impossible uh, to make this uh, conservation possible without the incentive. 
so do you uh, this is my first question i have two question so do you think that without uh, after pandemic government has the budget because health is now part of health uh, national security so will government will government be able to diversify its already tight budget into convert uh, con conservation do you think that uh, government of india will do that because you are part of the uh, government organization second thing is sir you talked about that northeast has abundance in terms of numbers but not in terms of volume so sir uh, do you think that uttarakhand in uttarakhand and himachal we have lot of industries which has come up so do you think that gov government support is lacking uh, on the part that industries have not been set up or is the issue that people in the northeast don't uh, trust uh, government with the uh, government programs like is there trust deficit also for giving their land for cultivation these two are my questions sir so uh, regarding the conservation uh, the of course you can see in the northeast there are some sacred group especially in meghalaya uh, parts of in assam and other places also there But the sacred group in uh, Meghalaya is to some extent uh, larger in the area, and by falling into that sacred group, some conservation is there. But uh, in other parts of uh, this uh, northeastern region, the sacred group or sacred uh, place where it is declared as a sacred, there are very small small areas. Sometimes only one tree is there or one small area is there like that. and that is a due to religious reason or for some reason of taboo they are preserved but otherwise from individual point of view or from the community point of view apart from the sacred group there are very few place where you can say they are conserved and then when it comes to government you see our government we are also i am also in the government and my department is responsible for a scheme called <coughs> conservation assistant to botanic garden there we use we give assistant for setting up botanic gardens for ex situ conservation of rare endangered or threatened plants or economic plants and medicinal plants also but what is happening is that i mean this is one of our mandate or one of our oblig obligation of the government of india after signing the cbd we are part of the, we are secretary to the cbd and it, under that it is compulsory or it is obligation for the government of india to also do conservation of this uh, rat species and and also for sustainable development and this uh, benefit sharing all this is comes under that but the budget allocation to all these programs are very meager so this is why you cannot we cannot take up in a large scale program until unless different department from agriculture from forest department or from other uh, urban development all come into play then only it will be possible then also we need to educate our local or the people the importance of this plants the problem is right now is none of us think plants are important you see plants come the last but development is the first of course development is equally important but we also should also conserve and uh, taking care of that those plants are uh, if their uh, uh, development is taking place okay they can be conserved by taking out and planting into a garden or some other place they can be rehabilitated but this is not done and also according to this green uh this green bell or this whatever this or like national highway or any development take, taking place i think that our uh, darling is aware of it 10% of the budget or something is to be allocated for conservation but most of the uh, department they, they don't give that is why conservation is not taking place and also now until unless the situation comes we are not going to realize you see 
Today, we are all breathing this oxygen uh, free, freely available. And we're very happy and we don't realize what, how much we are getting from nature. If you see the, uh, the estimate, people, uh, according to what I, I know, our, the way we are breathing oxygen per day, it's about, people say about 25, uh, 21,000 per day. We are spending, uh, I mean, we are getting free from plants. But once the plants are gone, we are not going to get. So those are the you know, importance of this, you know. So they so conservation comes not only for because of the medicinal plant or economic value, but there are uh, different aspects are there because plants contribute for all this for our well-being. And then regarding this, uh, uh, the second question was you was asking me. <laughs> Yes, sir. The second question was, sir, that uh, I, I have been attending a lot of webinars regarding Northeast Agri Horticulture Development. And every, in every webinar, this point is made that we need to develop value chain and all those things. And you pointed out that there's been a lot uh, talking about it, but we have not been able to walk the talk. So what is the biggest bottleneck that up after so many years and are this recommendation is been made every time I'm attending a Northeast webinar or people from Northeast are coming, whether it's regarding development, economics or other things. What's the major reason that this this talking has not become into a, something concrete for so many years, sir? Actually, what is happening right now, what I see is that in most cases, whoever take up this uh, program, most of them are they just wanted subsidy from the government. They wanted to start a program, a plan, and get some money. Then after that, they stop. But what is really needed is that this startup, we need to train people who are really serious to, start, to, to, uh, to do startup in the region, who are trained who can do that, who is really serious. Otherwise, right now, we don't have people who are serious in the business. Because many people are coming forward that they want this, that, and they're applying to government for a grant or for project. But reality, they are not very not serious. So we need to come up from the region, young people who are really trained and who can do startup because then only it is possible. Otherwise, all the seminar, workshop, we talk about this thing. The same thing has been repeated again and again, but nothing come out. So that is why really when, uh, what is required is some startup from the region has to come up. Otherwise, we cannot depend or we cannot expect somebody from Bangalore to come and do for us or from Cal uh, from Calcutta or Bombay to come and do for the Northeast. But from the Northeast itself, somebody has to start it. Of course, I've seen that in Shillong, Zizira is there. They are also trying to do it, but they are not uh, in a large scale. They have not done it. No. So we need to, I know we need, the government need to support these startups who are trying their best. Otherwise, Private companies will not come and just do like that, but then start up people from the region, who knows the region and who knows the difficulty or the problem, if they can do, then I think uh, it will be possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for making those points. Atre, please check with Dr. Singh. Can you join? Dr. Singh, are you around? No, sir, he's not around right now. Atresh, check it. Okay. Then can we have another question to Dr. Mao? Am I allowed to make... Something? Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, sir. Go, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Well, my own experience with communities, you know, on ethnobotany, of course, ethnobiology as well, because today we are not talking about the biology or the animal part of ethnobiology, but the botanical part while designing project and program for implementation in the rural communities across the northeast we see that 
their main interest is not so much about commercializing the plant that they have around for medicine. For many of them, it's about having all these plants which they can use as vegetables. Otherwise, many of these plants are actually medicinal. What mm -hmm. is your take on this? To what extent converting medicinal plants into edible plant which the communities use and to what extent that is actually building the nutritional health of the communities in a way that, that prevent them to take any medicine. What is your experience and what is your take? Uh, regarding that, I think the research institution can help because nutritional analysis of those plants, if we can help, and it can, if then we can recommend and people can start uh, growing that because what we are today is that in most cases this ethnobotanical or any biology in our in our scientists we have not analyzed analyzed the plant material or we have not uh, studied nobody has studied in most cases so science can help a lot in this and then it can promote uh, the local to the local of even if they cannot sell. If we can find out the nutraceutical aspect or the medicinal aspect of that, those crops, vegetables, and promote that. Because there are only the, some examples given from the, from the Northeast. There's a, one plant, I do not know in the, uh, uh, this uh, common name, Oxalis. Oxalis has been studied. And this plant contain this lo local, villages used as a vegetable. It has a sour taste, the leaf has a sour taste, but it contains very high uh, this iron content. And that is why those people are children or the ladies, anemia is uh, low, or, I mean that people are recommended to take that. So those kind of uh, studies, if we can conduct and we can uh, then that uh, we can, uh, recommend to the villages and that will really help in the nutritional aspect of the villages even if they are not sell sold as uh, medicine thank you i don't know yeah. that thank you thank you thank you very much in fact the second challenge is getting the planting materials and i'm happy that botanical survey of india is trying its best to make the planting materials available across and i think some of these species if it is made available for you know common uses it will be really helpful you know thank you so much well it's a pleasure to welcome professor pk singh as i have mentioned yes. he has a very very charismatic name if i pronounce it fully so as much as the charismatic species mm -hmm. in the botanical context of north is so may we have you may we have you professor singh the floor is yours now Yes, all the time I am accompanying with the forest, ICR, and uh, just now I am in the ICR office. Mm, okay. Uh, doing, some, uh, doing some research program regarding the uh, red medicinal plants cultivation and uh, this programming along with some of the universities I am doing. I am very sorry, sir, uh, Dr. Dr. Dalong and uh, Dr. Mao, I'm very fortunate to see you too after so long time. And uh, as we are entering uh, to all, all is changing our uh, the faces also. <laughs> I'm very happy today to see you too. Um, and uh, I, again, I do apologize that uh, I am on the way inside a car and I could not hear you, but I could hear Dr. Mao's speech and very interesting. And uh, I'm very sorry because of this uh, short of time. Uh, please uh, 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 do not mind. This is my. Okay, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Please, please, please go on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, regarding the topic 
of today's discussion regarding ethno-medicinal plants and ethno-botany of the Northeast. Particularly, I am very proud of my uh, teacher, my guru, Professor S. E. Sina. He got retired from our department. Uh, Arswell Genu Center, he worked and, uh, mm, and another doctor, Dr. Dividev, he was our teacher in the college. And uh, because of the two uh, figures, I can follow them and uh, I do learn from them, some or other. But all, uh, and the uh, Botanical Survey of India, Eastern Circle, Shillong, uh, there our Dr. Mao is all the time, and I got so many um, help from him also. Regarding ethnobotany report, particularly, Professor Chinna did his PhD program in the ethnobotany of Manipur. And some medicinal plant list also he has published. And uh, from that background, we are entering the ethnobotany of Manipur. So far, I have published uh, about uh, um, hundreds of paper and the produce some in the field of ethnobotany. I produce about about 15 out of my 25 PhD. I produce uh, around 10 are ethnobotany students, particularly Northeastern region is very rich because of the so many, uh, I mean, uh, communities, I should say. Uh, so in Manipur also, we can cite an example, uh, the Sidul caste, Sidul tribe, general, uh, general people and the um, Sidul tribe, people, they have their different uh, different identity. They have different culture. And the, so far, my knowledge is concerned. Some, uh, because we are in the state itself, it may be different because of the valley area and the hilly area. But our culture is almost same. And uh, we can mix up and the intercaste marriages and so many others we are performed from uh, time immemorial. And they still, it is a pleasure that we could go ahead in this modern world. And even we are conserving our culture and that traditional knowledge system, which a particular community has. This is one of the, um, the examples I could learn. Because in Manipur, from 33 AD onwards, from 33 AD onwards, uh, from 33 AD onwards, it is king's uh, place, so many kings, during each and the every king time, maybe 1700, 1720, one king, Lanto Kagemba, during his time, 1720, during his time, he organized the Ichno medicine in Manipur. He was the pioneer one. And uh, during that time, no um, say medicine and the doctors are not, we are not there. And he practice the um, maiba we call it maiba we call it it is uh, uh, gaura or uh, the maiba uh, and the uh, directorate of maiba and uh, maiba is masculine and the maibi is feminine two directorates of maiba and the maibi and the uh, all the 
leaders of the Maiba and the Maibi, they claimed, they claimed so many medicine, medicinal plants and their uh, uh, preparation as, uh, as a drug medicine to the king. And the king accepted. And uh, we particularly, if I took uh, only 10 minutes time, particularly the king, he has established for a particular element. Say we have body stone in our body. Now it is very common, body stone. We call it Nung, we call it Nung. It is body stone. N-U-N-G, no. So some plants, the Maibas, leaders of the medicinal uh, community, they name it uh, the Nungai Peru. That means, that means the body stone can be break by the plant. So this, this is uh, particularly, this name of the plant is, <laughs> Dr. Mao is very much familiar. If this uh, this is uh, um, uh, what uh, we call it. Uh, this uh, pneumolaria, we call it the lobelia species. There are some other species are there. So the name Nungai Peru means it can break our body stone. Like like that we have. Mm, different uh, naming of the plants. I have published one book with quarters with my student Sanjay Singh, mm, uh, naming of the plant names I published. Here we mention how a plant is named according to its naming. The particular medicinal plant according to its name it is for a particular element it can be. So these are some of the examples I could uh, and the scientifically we did. So far, uh, one of my students did her PhD program in uh, uh, Gonio Thelamas, Gonio Thelamas Sescupedalis. It is also one of the plant selling in the market, selling in the market the dried one is selling in the market along with the uh, with, uh, with uh, um, uh, some of the plants, and it it is used as a group to uh, inside a room or newly constructed house. It is burnt, and uh, the uh, the smoke. Uh, our forefathers they think it is uh, fungicidal, insecticidal, and uh, bactericidal. The burnt plant part, we suck up and uh, it is uh, dissolved in, a, in different organic solvents. And uh, some human pathogenic fungus are cultured. We have collaborative program with Disney Institute of Medical Science, AIMS, uh, human pathogenic fungus, we cannot rear, we cannot culture. So, by the burnt smoke, it is dissolved in organic solvent, can kill human pathogenic fungus. We have published two, three international journals. So, this example I would like to draw your kind attention. It is nothing but some of the cultural plants, socio-religious plants, some of the medicinal plants, their property we have to get by chemical means and some other experiment we can done, we can do, and then scientific validation can be made. So regarding that, we do some sort of scientific validation according to the use of some of the medicinal plants. This is my um, aims and objectives. Uh, these are there are so many other medicinal plants, uh, particularly for a particular element, uh, the, uh, the importance of the plant can be uh, drawn from the uh, four others.
it's, it's no particular ideas. These are my, uh, can, uh, say, mm, uh, interests. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Singh. It was wonderful listening to you after so many years. I wish yeah. I could be a research scholar under you. <laughs> Maybe right. age do not permit anymore, but that will remain my dream and desire. Maybe in the next birth, who knows? <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Dr. Darung, we are very proud of you and uh, Dr. Mao. Dr. Mao is a master of plants, uh, particularly yes. in our Northeast. He is legend. He is a uh, giant of uh, because uh, I was uh, I could recollect one. I could recollect one in our Suchampu I... district. In our Suchampu district, one plant. Mm. Um, it was uh, the decoction of the plant. The juice of the plant is used for cancer. The the uh, croton caudatas. Uh, I. Identified it in my laboratory, but for confirmation, I went to Shillong. I met Mao, Dr. Mao, I met him, and uh, he asked his students to check in the herbarium, and the name was uh, uh, the, the correct. The mm -hmm. thing is, the thing is, the, if the correct name is not confirmed from Dr. Dr. Mao, how can I proceed? This is scientifically people will love without knowing a scientific name of a plant. How can we go for ethnobotanical ideas, for biochemical ideas, and so many things can be done. But the first step is to identify the plant. So uh, I am very proud of Dr. Mao. <laughs> And the uh, and I could see his flora uh, of Jokobili, very nice indeed. And the BSI also published flora uh, of Jokobili. And uh, so far, yesterday I said to Epidas, there will be dead Himalayan one. Uh, 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 I mean, same a workshop will be held in the month of April 24 to 25. So far, I started my ethnobotany and the taxonomy work in the year 1998-99. Today is 2021. So yeah. far, so far in my name, one plant, uh, say new species, Trichodesma kumarium, under my name, is named in the, it has been published um, new species and uh, one uh, one plant plant also aldo banda that one uh, is uh, recorded in manipur after 65 years uh, discovery of and then 44 uh, uh, new reports i put uh, Publish. So mm -hmm. these are my comments. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, thank you, Professor, and thank you, Dr. Mao. Both of you are actually knowledge bank, but also the knowledge bridge between academia, research institution, and the communities. So we are proud of both of you, and every name of plants are in your fingertips, and how to use them. And we have a question on our screen from Atreyi Bardhan Roy from Asian Confluence. She's asking, how can the knowledge of ethnobotany and studies related to native practices of growing these plants help in the conservation and rejuvenation of the otherwise endangered and almost close to extinction plant variety in this region? Both of you can share your experience on this, please. No, only, only one, uh, one minute I'll take. <clears throat> uh, 
this is very important and a nice question and a very pertinent question. So, put a join some of the, I mean, uh, program of uh, uh, of the different uh, categories of plants, particularly treated vulnerable. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, these things. I join in the Nagaland also, and in some other programs. And now, uh, some of my students they did their PhD by uh, observing the red medicinal plants. Particularly, now the same question. I was very much interested in one of my students in ICR. I am in ICR now. In ICR, he did his PhD program after surveying all the districts of Manipur and the red medicinal plants we could identify. He could identify 32 medicinal plants. Out of the 32 medicinal plants, we selected four medicinal plants. These four medicinal plants, according to their habitat, Kurkuma angustifolia, I selected, Hedaikium marginatum, I selected, Iris levigata, I selected, and uh, another one is uh, uh, another one is uh, uh, no Loma Isolgia Isolgia communis. It is selling in the market and the price is very high. And it is extracting from the forest and the even cultivation is very meager. So uh, this coming April 13 and 14, we have our new year in Manipur. This Iris <laughs> earlier it was known by uh, Dividev and uh, S.S. Sina, Iris Bekari, but now it is Iris Levigata. Iris Levigata, one inflorescence, one flower, it costs 10 rupees. And a bunch of flower having five, six inflorescence, it costs 50 rupees. And so it is extracted from the marshy areas and the selling in the market on that day, New Year, Chayrawa. Now, conservation steps of these plants are very necessary. As the question, the question is very much interesting. The conservation steps. So we did crop physiology and then plantation, conservation, and then yield of the plant. Thank you very much. Dr. Mao, please. Yes. Well, uh, okay. So regarding this conservation or this heterobotany, you see, today the youngsters, the young people going in colleges or schools, and even in the villages, many people are not aware of this import or this heterobotanical practices or the uh, plants. You see, what has happened is that with the introduction of uh, agricultural crops outside, from outside like hybrid plants. Now, even if you go to villages or in, in, in small towns and uh, this, uh, towns in the uh, Northeast, people are not growing anymore the local indigenous plants or the local vegetables are not being, uh, they are not being sold. Most of these uh, cultivated crops are being introduced and they are using. That's why now many of the youngsters, younger generation people are not aware of this uh, importance of this plant. Or even they are, they, are not, uh, they are not growing those plants inside their garden or in their area. So that is why, that is the important is the ignorance of the plants. That is the most uh, important, uh, I mean, one of the most uh, endangered thing, which is endangering the uh, local plants and species. And then only if you go to the remote areas, they are the ones who still maintain the germplasm and they are the one who is growing and conserving these plant uh, species. So in, really, in reality, we see that the remote villages, the remote places are the one, uh, the places where these plants are available or they are being conserved. Because 
there is not much introduction of outside class. So that is why I think the government or the people should give them incentive to those remote villages for conserving this uh, jam plaza. I think that's the way we can conserve. But of course, we need to educate our uh, younger generation about the importance of this plan. And also, we also need to introduce in, a, uh, in our local uh, daily diets, by, uh, by the varieties. Because today, most of the children they are not eating anymore those kind of vegetable or fruit what the, their parents used to eat. So that, of course, the, our parents' responsibility also and the local uh, community also has to take responsibility. And any education in schools and colleges also need to be done like that. Then only we can conserve the knowledge as well as the plan. Otherwise, I think the chances are very remote of conserving the plan. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are already 66 minutes in conversation. Sir. Mm. I think there is another question that has come in. Can places such as Zoko Valley and festivals such as Hornbill in Nagaland used to spread more awareness about the variety of flora in Northeast India and the related ethnobotanical practices? Both yeah. of you can briefly respond. Uh, it is it's very always, yes. The question is also very interesting. Uh, there's uh, the same. The same can be repeated. The same can be repeated. Uh, say, uh, Doctor, uh, Doctor Mawa, can I draw your attention? Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. In Please Manipur. Ahead. In Manipur, we have we have Maite Hindus and the Maite religion only religion. But in Hinduism, Philanthus Imbilika. Earlier, earlier it was uh, uh, Imbilika officinalis, Philanthus. The fruit, the fruit, the fruit is garden make a garland and the uh, boat race is done then we call it uh haiku hidunga haiku means amla and the hidunga means haiku own boat own boat and uh, two groups will come and the boat racing will be done so it is a festival it is the popularization, popularization and the importance of Amla and the, the, it is very much linked up with the culture of a particular community like Maiti community, I also in the community. So the word conservation of the people know that the importance of Amla, Palanthas, Imbilika. And uh, so it is in the form of a festival like uh, like in Nagaland Hornbill and in Manipur, as I uh, told you, as I told you, one day is there, one day is there, and uh, on that day, on that day, Ilya Champa, Magnolia Champaka. The flower is flower is uh, the, uh, is offered to the god on that day. Well, like how we call it, like how katpa. Katpa means to offer. So on that day to offer that like how means magnolia champaka. People used to conjure. On that day it will be very much costly. I price will be very much high. So the question is a very interesting question. According to a particular plan and uh, related to the community, some of the festivals can be broadened, can be that this is my idea. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Mao, please. Yeah. 
actually it is uh, on bill festival or any festival what they are doing of course they are also showing the showcasing the uh you know uh, i mean the cultural aspect but uh, no botanical practices i don't think they are showing much but then one in one way how they can promote ethnobotanical practices is by promoting homestay in the villages homestay is very uh, good way of uh, spreading this ethnobotanical practices because i have seen or i have experienced in uh, malaysia i went for a, this uh, biodiversity conservation training and we were taken to different villages uh, in that uh, program and we stayed at home stay and then there each uh, for we were put up in one house at least two people and then there we eat we sit together with the uh, the house people eat together with them do everything together so it was a uh, by that way you learn a lot about the people but what is happening is that i have seen in north east also now the people are doing homestay but our homestay is quite different they make it like a hotel though you are coming and stay in their own house but everything is like a hotel and you are uh, staying there I, that is not homestay at all homestay means they should come and stay in a very simple like what you are staying at home or uh, uh, in the village then also eat the food what they cook by the uh, the house owner share the food together and then do all what they want they go to feel together and then uh, the uh, whatever they do the family you experience that for one two days or for a week this is what they do but in our case what i have seen in the north is is not like that to uh, what i have experienced so that's why the, our home stay can be a very good uh, thing to promote the our this uh, ethnobotanical practices of the region so that is which i would like to say that yeah thank you very much i think that is a very very good idea hmm. revisiting our practice of home stay mm -hmm. Mr. Alak, how long can we go on? Sir, sir, actually it was for one hour and we have crossed the time. But if you want, we can have this for another 10 minutes, sir, before we close. Yeah. Do we have any other questions from any one of us? Uh, sir, there's a, this is just asked uh, the name of sir's book. What's the name of your book, sir? This is for Dr. Singh. And from where we can get it. Please, some. Suggest some good books on medicinal plants of Manipur. Uh, uh, medicinal plants of Manipur, we have uh, one book published by my guru, Professor S. E. Sina, Medicinal Plants of Manipur. It is an old book. It was published in the year 1996. And uh, another one I published, Plant Names. Of Manipur. It is uh, published in the year uh, 2018. And the another name of my student, uh, uh, say Bir Kumar, he published one book also, uh, Encyclopedia of Medicinal Plants. And uh, I'm trying to publish one book with one photograph, one photograph and uh, the local name and the utility, ethnobotanical, ethnomedicinal value of the plant. It is uh, going to be completed. I could publish it. In that around, uh, around 1,400 above plants, I could incorporate in that. So, uh, regarding if uh, some of the students are interested, they can communicate my email and uh, I'll incorporate in their future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> On behalf of Asian Confluence and the, the team therein, it's a pleasure to 
to have had the opportunity of listening to these two scholars, as I said, who were who are the knowledge bank on ethnobotanical aspects of the Northeast. And also they are the knowledge bridge between the academia, research institutes, and, and the communities. The discussion that we have just concluded showed that you know the communities in the Northeast are the owner, custodian of varieties of ethnobotanical species. They have an aspirations, they have a dreams of converting these resources into assets. And yet there is one challenging area that they have not been able to convert these assets into economic prosperity as yet. So this will remain a challenge in spite of the fact that there has been several initiatives both from the government or other organizations. At the same time, we have listened to the various challenges that we have mm -hmm. been illustrated in today's discussion. Having said that, once again, let me thank Professor P.K. Singh and Dr. Mao and hopefully this is just the beginning of this conversation and the challenge remains for us that as they have pointed out how do we harvest the wisdom of the elders of the communities in the areas of ethnobotanical knowledge how do we convert this knowledge of the women that is there across the communities harvesting or harnessing the strength of the youth in in different ways how do we translate all of this into both conservation practices as well as economic practices which is the dream of the communities once again thank you very much for highlighting the issues challenges opportunities or potentials on ethnobotanical practices and conservation of endangered plants in Northeast India. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I just wanted to make a few quick points before you, all of you leave. First of all, I want to thank my colleague Atre for arranging this and bringing all of you on this platform to talk about such an important topic. And I would like to thank Dr. Vincent for moderating this session so well and the two panelists, Dr. Singh and Dr. Mao, for extensively talking about this, th these, this important thing and the point raised by both of you. As Dr. Mao said that we need local entrepreneurs so that we can finally walk the talk and realize the potential. And we need to invest in research and development more so that people uh, have do get what they need and we work on the conservation. Dr. Singh, I am not an expert from ethno botanical thing, but it was very nice listening to you and the wide knowledge which you told us in a very limited amount of time, which we could allot you. I hope after this pandemic is over, we could host you at our Shillong office and see you in person. It was nice having all of you. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you. 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 Thank you.